What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 33 of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you stream podcasts, talking about the music industry, music business, entrepreneurship, but also the content creator economy as a whole. Now, as always, you know, we like to kick off the podcast with a little advice, at least observing some potential advice and giving Mm -hmm. y'all our opinion on it. So check out this right here because the new way to break out in content is creating bad content on purpose. I'll show you exactly what I mean when I play this clip right here. I hate my TikToks. I don't like that. I mean, I maybe have like five that I really, really like. I've yet to delete them all. I have no process. I just kind of, I think of something bad and then I do. Okay, did you hear that? Doji Cat just revealed a mindset shift you need on TikTok, especially if you're feeling burnt out or you're feeling like you're putting in a ton of effort, but you're not growing. I've grown viral TikTok accounts and I also design creative content strategies for national brands and influencers on TikTok. Right now, it's becoming clear that there's one strategy that the most brilliant marketers do that you can do here on TikTok. Kanye West has used Doja Cat's strategy to market himself and his products to make billions of dollars. Trying to be good or come up with good ideas is often boring. Kanye, Doja Cat, and other marketers take a good idea and do the opposite. With the Kanye West Gap collab, the good, boring idea would have been to display his clothes at Gap beautifully on the shelves, but instead he put them in the worst idea possible, in trash bags. This was brilliant because it made him viral. People would have been bored if he had just put the clothes on shelves. And here's how this is going to help you grow on TikTok. On my viral account, I was feeling stuck at about 150,000 followers. While my videos were getting about five figures, 10,000 views, 30,000 views, 60,000 views. And out of frustration, one day I just kind of woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to try on this video. I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to try something I haven't done before. And I made this video, my 15 million view video. Being good and being perfect is the enemy. Try to be bad. Mm, Try to be bad. What do you think about that, Corey? I think it's contextual advice, right? I think it is good advice. Um, it kind of goes back to the conversation we had about just create more so to learn like who likes you, what you're good at, that type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I think for the artists of a Doja Cat or a Kanye caliber, it's more about humanizing them. Mm-hmm. That's the marketing, right? You are now this larger than life entity. We need you to do things that make you feel relatable, regular, right? And so what do we typically associate with high level acts, artists, brands? really high quality content what do we typically associate with regular people much lower quality content right creator a who is a mega superstar creator b who is a guy with ten thousand followers creator a might be using the red camera to make his or her tiktoks credit b might be using the iphone 8. it's only different so we tend to associate lower quality execution of ideas and content style with like regular people so we watched doja cat very genuinely use that to submit her brand, right? Like, mm. if you looked at Doja Cat really early on on TikTok, all her companies has always said, hey, she's just like me for real. She seems just like a regular person, right? So yeah. that was a part of her game plan. Let me, even though I don't think, I don't know, now watching that, I don't know if that, I always thought she was intentionally going for that. Now it sounds like it was an accident, you know what I'm saying? But I always thought that was the game plan, but that's why it worked. Hey, we can make this larger in life figure look like a regular person. Yep. And it's different because if you just did some super high quality stuff, people, it wouldn't be as exciting because people are expecting that from you. Same thing with Kanye. Like he said, be easy for Kanye to go set up some massive display in like a Gap store or a mall. And that will be the norm for someone of his size. But what's different, what's going to draw a conversation? Let's put this shit in trash bags and throw it on the middle of a floor and let people dig it out the trash bags, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, However they want to. So um, like I said, I think good advice contextually um, but the key part of it is like, like I said, like being bad will either lead you to your eventual genius idea. I do agree with that. Or being bad will create something that other people like that you don't like. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you do something. I mean, we've seen it, right? How many times have we just thrown up a video or a piece of content? Oh, we got to make the deadline. And then, you know, you go read the comments and niggas like, that's the best shit I ever seen, Sean. Like, yo, Sean, you was in your bad today, bro. Like, you ain't never gave no advice like this. You're like, bro, what? <laughs> all the shit I don't gave you, all the shit I, I sat yeah. down and tried to perfect and research and think about. And you like this video that took me two minutes that I threw up because, you know, EJ was yelling at us about getting some videos on time. So yeah. people are interesting, man. That's that's the one thing you have to always remember, bro. People are interesting. People are fickle. 
you will never truly have a gauge on what people like because people's tastes will literally change overnight. And, you know, like I said, to this point, the best thing you can do is like create, even if you feel like it's going to be bad and just put it out there and see how the marketplace feels about it. Let that guide or the rest of your process goes. Hey man, you use one of my favorite words, which is context. Mm. Like that, that really does dictate how to go about this advice because talking about Kanye, yes, you obviously could do it in this high end type fashion, but doing it in a trash bag is something that's less expected from for people at his level, mm-hmm. right? So you're get, always getting viewed through the context of how people view your world, right? Or mm-hmm. your your peers, right? Your category is a better way of saying it, mm-hmm. right? If I look at you as a top performing, uh, clouded artist, then I'm going to judge you by everything that I think comes with that. But if I look at you as an indie artist, right? Mm, different. It's different, yeah. right? An indie artist that doesn't have anything going for themselves. You only have a thousand listeners. Like I look at you as smaller. I might judge you in, for based on your music, but looking at your marketing, I'm not going to say, oh, just because you did a trash bag, it makes you amazing, mm-hmm. right? Yet, without you building the story, Kanye can just do the trash bag, not tell the story, and the story be the trash bag itself. Everybody else will create it for him. Yeah. You would have to push that story just to make me feel it anywhere near the same, and I still wouldn't view it exactly that way. Yeah. So, yeah, the bag, good. I don't know. But one thing I can say is, especially when you're in a, a Kanye space where you have the ability to give a lot of visibility to whatever you're doing, it becomes almost easy from a standpoint of people get used to one thing and then you just do the opposite, yeah. right? That's what yeah. bad is, is is essentially coming down to. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm just going to give it this other, I'm going to do it differently. And because of who I am, it brings validation to it where someone else might have to do it differently and then also convince you while it's still good. But yeah. people are going to assume, oh, this is Kanye, this is genius. Yeah, exactly. Just because he did it. Yeah, and like perception plays a huge part in it because, like you said, if a smaller artist would do the trash bag thing, we would first place that people's mind would go is like, oh, because they're broke, they don't have money to do. Right, it's not a concept. It's a concept yeah. when you got money. You yeah. broke when you don't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's like just like it's no different than. Have you ever seen an artist that you were watching since they were like small? You could you could tell they were like really grinding. And then you remember the day they post like their first like high quality music video or something. And like you mm-hmm. feel like they leveled up, right? It's like they'll Taylor Swift drops a high quality video every time she drops one, but it's not special because we expect Taylor Swift to drop high quality videos. Right. But for this new artist who we watch shooting videos with iPhone, this new HD video that he dropped is cool because it feels like a level up moment, right? So even in that context, the marketing might be like, oh, it's genius. This artist finally is able to do X, Y, Z, right? And that narrative is much different for them. So that's why I say like perception plays a big part into it. Positioning of the artist plays a big part into it. And it's also why I don't knock the way he gives the advice because he did mention like as a marketer himself, he mainly works with national brands. So he is mainly working with people who are on that level, probably trying to seem more relatable, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, um, you know, to your point, take what would be a regular idea and make it seem more genius because we as this big brand are doing it. So the audience of people that he's probably talking to, like like I said, it makes sense for their audience. For, for like you said, those smaller artists who might be listening to this, um, like I said, to me, the value in creating bad content is more about getting yourself into the motions, getting yourself comfortable being on camera. Because there are a lot of things that we do look at from artists. Shit, I just said it about Doja Cat, but there are a lot of things that we'll look at from artists sometimes and be like, oh, that shit was genius how they think of that. And that was, it was genuinely an accident. You know what I'm saying? Like they were, yeah. just, they were just fucking around and like it happened and, and that came to be, you know? So, um, yeah, that's what I want people to take away. Well, I'll say the other thing for me is just the perspective of comes that comes with saying I'm going to do something bad, mm. right? Because if you force yourself, right, just as an exercise to get out of your box and say, what would make me completely uncomfortable to do? Mm. Not just like, oh, I don't like speaking to people, right? Because that's one way of saying, oh, I'm uncomfortable doing this and I got to get better at that skill. Mm. So not that, but hey, I'm cool. I'm good comfortable posting videos. I'll post plenty of videos. But what would make me uncomfortable because I think it's a bad idea mm. and it would just suck. Well, how do I take that thing that apparently would suck and flip it on its head? Mm-hmm. And just going through that exercise and putting yourself in a different space causes you 
to come up with something creative. And a lot of times we get anchored based on what we already like. Mm -hmm. If we don't go through some exercise that starts with the perspective shift, then we start to lose that punch in whatever we post. Mm -hmm. So just creating a starting point, even if it's just mentally as that exercise is going to take you down a different path. And I don't think people use mental exercises like that enough. But companies, content teams, many of the artists that I know who do it well and do it consistently, it's actually always these types of exercises Mm because you can't just like churn out creativity again and again and again without it starting to become dull if it's not coming from a new perspective. So it's two things, right? There's, hey, I'm going to continue to experience and consume new things. So I have new information to work with Mm -hmm. and creative raw material to build something from. And secondly, I'm going to strategically make myself think about something from a different perspective. Yeah. All right. So it was like, well, what if I had to start with a letter or what if, you know, I would do something that every all my audience hates? Like, who does my audience hate? And what if I did the same thing that they did, but I did it in a way that, that they liked it? Yeah. Like, it's just weird exercises that literally just forces you to think differently, just as simple as that. So that's my biggest takeaway, right? Do the exercise and consume new information. Those two things will put you above most people in general. Yeah, I understand a lot of times your most genius idea will come from you stepping out your comfort zone. 1,000, 1,000. And with that being said, because this is a TikTok special episode today, by the way, we played that TikTok uh, clip for some advice, but now we got to talk about TikTok and the heist that they're pulling. Oh, they're, yeah. they, they're about to run some game on the industry. That's all crazy. And um, the record labels, they, they're about to come for TikTok. They might want to shut TikTok down. Let me tell you why. Imagine being a TikTok star and next thing you know, 57% of the sounds on your videos has been completely muted. That's a lot. You don't have no sound on your videos. Most of your videos at this point, your back catalog. So now once you know you don't have sound, the videos don't really get watched like that. We've all seen those videos on TikTok and they're muted and it's like, uh, I'm just gonna go to another video. It's awkward. It's awkward. It's real weird. You don't know what's going down. (laughs) And sometimes you're like, man, I can tell it's a good video, but I will, right? That's the type of experience that's happening on TikTok right now being tested in Australia. And why is TikTok muting sounds? Well, uh, Music Business Worldwide did an article on this and it basically breaks it down like this, right? So one, the test involves limiting access to songs for a select group of users in the market when they upload new videos. So they don't even want certain sounds to be available from these major labels because TikTok's trying to figure out can we survive without major record label music? Mm-hmm. Can we get popping? Can we stay popping without music from the record labels? And obviously the record labels aren't feeling this. So they're muting all these different sounds in the Australia territory where, you know, you use those songs before. Oh, well, can't use them again. And now if anybody else wants to use them in the future, they can't. But what's TikTok doing on the other side? They're also generating music with AI. Mm. trying to see can we just generate music with ai and users not even notice or care and they still create successful on viral content instead of us having to pay these record labels because these record labels keep complaining and wanting new things from us day by day that is creating an issue and that's why they're calling it a heist for tiktok because one tiktok used record label music in the beginning and the record labels are like, hey, y'all need to pay up. TikTok said no nah, for a long time, mm-hmm. a good amount of time. And then finally, they agreed to a fixed deal. When they agreed to that fixed deal, the record labels, many didn't like that, but they got a fixed deal. They last what, two to four years, whatever that term was. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, and by the way, when I say the record labels didn't want the fixed deal, they wanted to be about based on the amount of streams and activity that actually happened. Yep. Right. So. They had all this happen, got record labels to agree to a deal that the record labels didn't even want to do. And then 
they get to this point where they're testing. All right. This agreement is probably going to start ending pretty soon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I see the writing on the wall. Instead of having to negotiate with these fools, let's see if we don't need these fools at all. Because that takes away leverage even more so. If they see us winning in this territory and things are popping through this music made by AI, why do we need labels? Because we got our indie artists. The indies are always going to be creating new music anyway, day by day, trying to pop. Because the labels don't own that yet. And then secondly, AI, oh, that'll fill in the gaps in terms of the quantity we might need. TikToks, pulling a finesse. I don't even know. We should talk about how it might affect the consumer side of it and the artist side of it. But overall, if they pull this off, record labels are going to be angry. Like different type of angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a whole another level. Uh, it, I mean, it really is some mafioso shit in terms of the way this whole thing has been going back and forth. So like Here's a stat. According to TikTok's end of the year recap, 13 out of 14 Billboard Hot 100 number one songs in 2022 were driven by significant viral trends on TikTok. It's a lot of leverage on TikTok. So, right. so, you know, the labels, they need TikTok. Or they really, really, really want TikTok. Why? Because we weren't seeing a, a clear engine to drive music streams like we were. And uh, like we have seen since TikTok came about. Yeah. All right. So we know they want it. And the record labels problem is they don't do well at innovating and bringing attention to their music, especially at scale, at a price that they can't, um, that they actually can pay. So what do we do? We keep waiting for new technology to pop up and then try to utilize our rights that we hold to leverage a deal in our favor. Yeah. We can't create TikTok. We can't create Spotify. It's just not in our system and infrastructure to have the mental capability to do it well and manage it and continue to grow it. That's yeah. just not their expertise. So Spotify gets leverage. Oh, well, let's try to own some of Spotify. TikTok gets leverage. Let's try to own some of Spotify or I mean, let's try to own some of TikTok or let's try to do a deal with them early enough on. But these tech companies and TikTok is like like the the indie artists, like the new age indie artists. They know their value, bro. Yeah, and they yeah, and they they're trying to own the whole thing themselves. They don't want to bow down to the labels at all. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy, bro. Because I was just thinking about this, right? Too, because like TikTok has Sound On. Yep. Which for those of you that don't know, Sound On is TikTok's distribution company. Mm -hmm. And what do we just you you vaguely touched on it uh, last episode, episode before, right? Where distribution companies are. A lot of them times by the new record labels, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, this is how I'm seeing with TikTok. Well, I think this shit is is evil genius, right? So, no major label artist music can be used on the platform in Australia for now. Assume everywhere if this hits. Now, let's think about because you said how would this affect consumer artists? This is what I see, bro. Think about the trickle down effect, right? I'm a major label. I can't go to this platform. That has, you know, significantly benefited me because the music isn't available there. So not only do major labels lose a large chunk of their, you know, promotional assets, but they, they lose everything that comes with that. Right. But then on top of that, if I'm an artist who has been finding significant success on TikTok, then now I don't even want to go sign to a major label because it's gonna completely cut off my my priority engine, my priority Ooh, vehicle. You know what I'm saying? And okay. so and think about that. who picks up the slack of that? TikTok and their sound on distribution, right? We're not a major label, so we don't violate our own rules. We have the 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 growing leverage to provide a lot of the things for you that um, you know what I'm saying, these labels can provide outside of maybe capital. I don't know if sound on is giving out like deals or anything yet, but I mean I'm pretty sure they have DSP relationships. They're giving out some money. They have okay. Yeah, so, I know some artists. Right. So all right, we can do for you what a major label can do. We can, you know, of course help you do some back end things on the on to help you grow. And you can keep this whole funnel within the TikTok ecosystem. So now we can go out there and we can push the narrative. Hey, artists can be successful on TikTok despite major labels or artists can be successful in music despite major labels. All they need is the help of a, you know, your friendly neighborhood distributor like a sound doing <laughs> or something. So that's what I think is going to happen is it's going to take this whole generation of artists who value the ecosystem of TikTok more than they necessarily value the ecosystem of a label because a lot of these artists 
will come to understand TikTok before they ever come to understand the label system because it's easier access to it. Right? I can I can go download TikTok today, read the terms and community guidelines, and know what the fuck I'm getting into. It's not the same thing with a label, right? Yeah. So you build in a relationship early. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. It's like almost like, hey, we're going to use this influence we have to train the next generation of music artists and music stars who already see us as the way out to only fuck with us. And think about what you would be giving up by accepting help from people that we are at war with. Mm. Yeah. Because if you think about most artists, bro, the most an artist with a popping TikTok presence is 100% going to pick TikTok over the label any day. Most, for sure. Mo- okay, yeah. So at the sorry. very most, least, yeah. like, TikTok has first right of refusal. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. And then, like, they also... They are the A and R, right? I can see this creator when he first hopped on, and see when he first got his viral video, and be like, "Hey, this guy only got a thousand followers, but he just caught a ten million yeah. view TikTok last week." Let's reach out to him. Let's give him some crazy deals through Sound On because we can also just leverage more um, visibility on the platform because we know that's what they want, saving us some money, saving us some dollars, helping us build our narrative. Because TikTok is a narrative building mode right now. I don't think a lot of people realize it, but we talked about it. On, I think maybe on another episode with like. You can tell a lot of the moves they're making right now aren't necessarily because like they think it's gonna like cap immediately. Like they're they're setting the stage for the future. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they're setting the stage so that in two or three years from the conversation can be who's competing with major labels? TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Who's competing with blah, 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 blah? TikTok. You know what I'm saying? And like we have been very vocal over the last six months. I've only been doing this podcast and saying that hey, TikTok is competing with YouTube. You know what I'm saying? YouTube has been, for the most part, the only real social media platform with a direct pipeline into the music industry. From what I can tell, Instagram doesn't really seem to have one like that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Twitter, most of them don't really seem to like have a, as deep of a relationship or be as deep in bed with the music industry as YouTube is. Yep. Now, TikTok is putting themselves in a the position to, to be like YouTube in that same sense, but in a different way. And I mean, both of them are probably scary to labels. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, if I'm an artist and I know, hey, I can go pop on TikTok, and sound on to get me right. I'm gonna make some money on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? YouTube will get me right if I play the rules right. Why would I go over there and jeopardize half of my promotion engine? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I jeopardize this platform no longer fucking with me because you offer me a, what seems like a cool deal when I could just take this decent to pretty good deal with them and then still make everything I was making because I still at least have access to my my platform and and people have my fans have access to to me on their platform. They like like do you, like. Do you think that? It'll get to that point where TikTok straight up saying, hey, if you're using a record label, we're not going to have you on here. I think so. Because I mean, because the individual artists can't control how the licensing agreement goes. Right. Like if TikTok isn't able to negotiate um, something that the labels find fair and if the labels aren't able to negotiate something that TikTok finds fair, then the relationship is going to dissolve. And so either way, those artists are going to kind of be left in limbo. So, you know, what's what's the difference if that happens? You know what I'm saying? Like, if that happens, then, yeah, TikTok is not going to fuck with these artists because they're signed to a major. Do you think the consumer music will matter? No, I'll say it like this. Do you think the AI music will fail in, in the test or it'll win? I think it'll win only because, like, instrumental music and... and, like, electronic music and things like that have, have been pretty popular on TikTok. So, it's not like... It's not like every single viral song on TikTok is a song with words and lyrics to it. You know what I'm right. saying? Sometimes it's just it's just instrumentals and things. So it kind of makes me think of when Spotify saw that hole in their system with people liking what was it like sleep music and things like that, and they created AI to create those type of playlists and music um, to 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 fill in that gap. Because I see TikTok doing the same thing. Hey, electronic music and this type of instrumental does go viral on the platform cool, we're going to hire some AI creators to make that type of music. And then for the other genres where it is, people or lyric focus, we're just going to look internally in the platform and look for who to turn up and be representative of that part of music. That's what I think is going to happen. Because you're not going to be able to completely remove major label music from the platform because fans aren't going to let that happen. Like Fans are going to always find a way right. to put some shit on that they like. Right? Put some um, shit on there that they like or complain because shit that they don't like that they do like is not on the platform. Yeah. Right? So it's like, how do you navigate that? And that's why I want to ask you, like, how do I discover music as a fan? Right? If I'm, if if I'm not going to have an artist pushing this music mm. on his page that then goes viral or somebody paying for an influencer as a part of my artist campaign for me to discover the music, how are they going to get the AI music out 
to new people to even discover in the first place and compete? I mean, I think, you know, traditional stuff, they, they can get influencers to use it. Like they can still get influencers to do an influencer campaign. Um, they can still do advertisement. I've seen TikTok leverage other social platforms for marketing their own brand. So, so, so I'm sure they would do it for the artists. So like the AI side of it, I'm not like the most worried about. I almost think like that part was just for like, to like flare up the headline a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. to, to make the argument a little spicy, even the AI is kind of hot right now. I look at it like the only way they're going to, from a general music artist perspective, the only way they could get around that narrative is to highlight artists that are indie within the platform, right? So, and like massive artists too, like which we know they exist. Like we've seen like the Nick D's and you know what I'm saying, people like that who compete with major label artists, but all their, their, their main thing is TikTok, right? So right. like they're going to have to kind of step back and pay a lot more attention to that, which I know TikTok doesn't pay a lot of attention to because we've had instances where we've had clients go viral on the platform and they had no idea that it was happening. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh shit, this guy did this? Oh yeah, thanks for letting us know. And then they'll move from there. So I think there's gonna have to be a bit more of a developed like internal A&R team for TikTok or they build something in the algorithm. But I think for them to completely get out this narrative and make people go like, hey, here's the reason we need you to be cool with us taking away your Drake and your Taylor Swift and your Beyonce sounds, and which I know TikTok could do this because they lean on this narrative heavy, is they could say, hey, because we want to continue growing the community of TikTok and giving shine to TikTok stars, and we feel like that's more important. If they play that narrative, it'll work. If they don't lean to that narrative, I don't know if it'll work. Um, and like I said, fans going to always find a way to put some shit on there. That was happening even before TikTok had licensed rights to music. Right? I remember TikTok before that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like it was all like generic music and like ripped sounds floating on the platform. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of had to like find one and favorite it and hope it lasted until you got to make your video. You know what I'm saying? So it would just go back to that, you know, mm -hmm. but I think it'd be a cool peg in like TikTok's like overall narrative of like trying to be creator friendly and we're here to help the creator and take them to a new level. It would be an amazing narrative as a part of that. So I think I could see how they might find it or find a way to make it easier for people to find the AI music within the platform experience too, mm. as a part of your posting, find ways to push Wait, it. On there. Yeah. Cause they already got like the, the, the main sound tab where they have yeah, like the playlists and exactly. things they do. Um, in your analytics, you can look at, you can see recommended sounds. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So they, they already kind of been like building towards that. Right. So yeah. they have their playlisting editorial culture of their own. So, I could see how they could work that in. Something I also think about, though, is the question, right? Did they need major label music to pop in the first place or not? All right. And we know that major label music did have a part in the blow up of TikTok, but did it have to? Was it a primary driver? I'd argue no, because so much of it from the label side has been, hey, here's these artists who are popping on TikTok, let's sign them. Yeah. All right. So those are indie artists that are popping and creating culture. And then the labels are signing them. So it's not their music. And then we knew, like we were saying early on, this is why we went so hard on TikTok in 2019. Because they're like, man, we got maybe like one summer and the labels catch wind. The labels catch a wind. <laughs> they come in hard. So that gave us maybe about six months, nine months max. So like, let's get it now. And it started to happen in 2020. Labels started mm -hmm. to kind of catch on, get in the bag and saturate the market. And mm -hmm. you would start to see some of those bigger artists drop their stuff. And I remember one thing that you specifically said, and you were like, yeah, it's going to be a wrap. It didn't fully work out in the in the perfect way, but it still marked that timestamp. You remember what, what you said it was going to take? Was it that, uh, oh, what I said it was going to take? So, was it that Lil Nas X hat? Nah. Nah, it wasn't nah, that. Nah, nah. You're like, all it's going to take is one Drake song. Oh, uh, yeah. And then Drake did two six live. Yeah. You're like, Drake's going to come with a song <laughs> for TikTok. <laughs> About four or five months later, that shit happened. Right? He was a sense. Yep. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know, that song was, you know. Well, yeah. He did what he had to do. Yeah, he yeah. did what it was for, I guess. You know. But yeah, but that, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Like, labels were kind of siphoning. Because I do think the narrative of TikTok being the savior of the music industry did do a lot for TikTok because it made the yep. artist community more interested in it, which then brought over like other creator communities. Yep. And then, you know, like music is an integral part of TikTok. Just major label music isn't necessarily an integral part of TikTok. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're probably looking at like, hey, like if we were to 
take you out of the equation, we will maybe our dissatisfaction rate goes up 30%. You know, maybe our, you know, quality of the after some people go down by like 10%. But eventually they'll get over it. You know what I'm saying? Or the people that come in behind them won't even remember that time. You know yep. what I'm saying? And they'll, they'll just be so used to all because not like it's they're not like this thing like, hey, we're gonna push terrible music, right? Like you said, there's still lots of amazing yeah. acts who get their start on TikTok. And so that's what I was saying. I think the narrative is gonna be like, hey, let's just double down on making these acts stars in whatever capacity we can control, because this is a better narrative for us as a platform. Um, this is a, a big middle finger to the industry, you know what I'm saying, that didn't want to work out a, hey, a deal with us. Bro, we know, at least in the U.S., our culture love middle fingers. Yeah, they do love middle fingers. companies, man. Yeah, hey, yeah. we love some middle fingers, so they can always flip that narrative. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're doing it to give more shine and light on the indie. That's, that's what they're going to do, bro. Yeah, that's 100% yeah. on that. Stuff they, like that. They did the same narrative when the credit fund came out, bro. Like We knew what it was about. Hey, you see a revenue source, but how they flip it? We want to make sure our creators have a legitimate way to monetize their audience that's fun and blah, blah, blah to the audience. It's like, bro, no, you don't. You want 50% of this money you see sitting on the table by not offering them this thing, right? So yep. I think that's what TikTok is going for story. Like, okay, we're probably not going to like super cap on these artists in the next year or two. You know, it's going to take time for us to even build that trust with this artist community to make us believe in, to believe in us over the major label system. And then three years from now, we are propped up in a position where we are seriously competing with labels, at least with for the attention of rising superstar talent, a possible superstar talent. Now they're thinking of us as much of an option as they're thinking of you, Atlantic, you, Columbia, you, Sony, you, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to be crazy because that to me, I think TikTok is leading a really interesting fight against the labels that I always thought YouTube was going to lead. I always thought YouTube would be the one kind of doing this stuff. But I think they got they got too deep in bed with the labels. No legal code and comes from music, so it's like, yeah, we 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 at war in a sense, but like I still fuck with y'all. Like I built up all this history and work with y'all these decades, right? So TikTok doesn't have any of that traditional connections and stigma, right? They just oh, yeah. see pure competition, see pure dollars, and so they're leading a fight that I always thought YouTube would lead. Yep. That I think if they are successful in it, every platform is gonna look at it that way. Like, oh shit, like how can we build some pipeline where we can be the main ones monetizing our top percentage of this type of creator instead of them just using us as a platform for the audience to then go give away IP to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like all of them. Like, like I said, I think TikTok and YouTube could get away with it the most, but I, I do think every, like Twitter's going to start going like, damn, how can we help? Like the Twitter monetization thing, right? Like how can we help these uh, writers start monetizing their tweets? So I'm assuming the conversation is going to go at some point like, okay, how can we all get a bigger percentage of this because you built your audience over here and we helped you monetize and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, don't go to this don't go to Amazon and sign a book publishing deal, right? Come to Twitter and like maybe we sign a distribution deal for your ebook, right? So I think they're gonna open that door for other platforms to start thinking of shit like that if they haven't already. Um, and that is personally what I'm interested to see what comes out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm interested to see like is is the battle three to five years from now gonna be major label versus indie artists, or is it gonna be major label versus social media platforms? You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. social media platforms that are now because they can all go open up a TuneCore account. They can all go open up a Disho Kid account. They can all leverage their corporate way to get in bed with some of these music corporate people. You know what I'm saying? So these social media platforms that might be moving like breaker labels just in a more traditional sense that's more favorable to the new artists that came up watching people like us and all these different creators talk about and you know, the shit we talk about. And like, they're just gonna win like a battle of attrition. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can we wear people down over time to make them believe in our vision? Cause we keep pushing this creator friendly narrative and y'all don't, you know what I'm saying? And like, we know how much the artist community especially loves a good narrative about what company is for the people versus the company that's not for the people. You know what I'm saying? So I see the vision for it, bro. And I think it's genius, you know what I'm saying? Personally. Well, look, cause they use music and if they didn't need, if they kinda need major label music at the beginning, they don't need that a little bit now, I don't think. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah. culture's established. People are already used to going there for their for music. People already have the habit of going on TikTok. There's tutorials. There's things beyond music itself. Mm. Kind of like with YouTube, right? Yeah. They're not just there for music, which is why they had uh, more leverage with Spotify. TikTok is like, yeah, music is an arm of this, like, mm. or, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> arm of this. But it's not the full body because we got so many other spaces and places to pull when we want people to come over just to consume content. So it's going to be really interesting to watch, but you know, it's like, Hey, we riding together. 
And then once we got to the location, it's like, man, I don't need you. I never needed you. That's yeah. what it feels like. The record labels are feeling. Yeah. And, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for them because they record labels. And record labels already have a stigma. Mm-hmm. All right. There's already been a bad PR campaign for record labels for gone for like 20 years now. We yeah. even watch old movies, right, where the record labels is the bad guy. So in people's mind, record labels have been horrible for you know, six My grandma was on. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, you know, it's like a storied history. They probably think, oh, you know, they need to be uh what was the word? They reformed and shit mm-hmm. like that. Like that's that's the kind of mindset people have. Yet TikTok has a brand name that people respect and recognize these days. You know, Instagram people still respect and recognize. YouTube respect and recognize. Facebook struggling. You know, in that <laughs> regard, but there's many other social media apps that people respect and recognize and have a relationship they're building with mm-hmm. on a daily basis before they even enter the music industry mm-hmm. where Atlanta records don't really mean nothing on these streets. Yeah. Just the name of it. Cause I got, I say Atlantic record labels and you know, the, your friend or cousin might be like, Oh, okay. Like, I think I might've heard of them before, yeah. but it doesn't mean anything to them. It's like telling your mom, I got a job at Amazon. They know what Amazon is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That job might be working, making less money than you than you were at a different company, but mentally your mom's head, oh, he's secure. He's doing it. Maybe Amazon. Yeah, I may be at Amazon. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's a that brand name, that value that these tech companies are building with the app specifically is something that I don't know how labels are going to be able to overcome until they i don't know they figure out the model man because you can't just rely on the catalog the old catalog forever to continue to give that leverage most of this and their survival through this era has been the control of these older forms of music Mm -hmm. because you still got to go through us if you want to get this Mm -hmm. but hey if everybody says hey we're going to take away access and then we're just going to keep pushing new music and then get everybody used to that. We're basically rewriting history or writing your old records out of history. Yeah. You know? So that's that's interesting to see. And I 100% am going to be very curious to like stay stay on top of this one, see how it goes. I'm going to hit up some of our Australian people. You know, oh, yeah. that we see what's know up over there. there. See what's up. Mm-hmm. See, see, is it really going like it sounds from over here, or is this just a little propaganda, you know, to get some clicks on an article? Because it's really as it's believable, but it's also hard to imagine at the same time. I'm saying, man, they do it, bro. It's a it's a strong right hook, bro. It's like a, it's a it's, it's a, a it's a wild job to take, man. But right. as I said, bro, I, it's to your point. It's like if this was maybe two three years ago, the labels would have had a point. But now it's like like you said, TikTok looking like, hey, bro, like. We helped you get those billboards. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't you didn't really help us. And like we're still a viable marketing engine. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So even if you not what I think is gonna happen is like TikTok is gonna start charging labels for promotion, like a typical marketing campaign. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, you didn't want to license this to us for whatever, so now you want us to feature this Taylor Swift song on the platform and XYZ half half a million dollars, hundred K. Right? Like now we just a marketing expense. The same way you would drop this. PR expense if you wanted to get on Complex or get on Billboard or, or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, hey, now we're going to make money off of you when we was willing to break bread with you if you was chill about it, but you didn't want to. So now we got to violate you perception-wise and pocket-wise. Crazy, bro. As I said, it's such a such a bold-ass move to take by TikTok, <laughs> which is why I fuck with it, bro, because I want to see where it goes and who, what it inspires, you know what I'm saying? It'd be funny if they go that far with it. That'd be, that'd be funny as hell. Yeah. But they would essentially be treating them like any other corporation, mm-hmm. all right? If you want us to market, because you know, TikTok, of course, can be used individually with all the content creators who exist on the platform. But as you know, you know, they work directly with some of these major corporations. Like, you know, when we first started working with them as an agency, they had some pretty expensive, I didn't want to say pretty expensive, they got some expensive ass packages. Oh, yeah. You big enough? Yeah. They got some packages that, they compete with those numbers y'all would hear with radio mm-hmm. and how expensive radio gets. Say, 
some of those numbers, if not more. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's just <laughs> some numbers out there. You know what I mean? It's some numbers out there. But we got we got NDAs and stuff, so <laughs> you can't get out all the specifics and slap it on the screen. So, yeah, man, it's going to be interesting to watch. I, I Hopefully, uh, y'all find this as interesting as we do. But, but, like, trust me, that impact on that and how the outcome of this, it, it can literally change the landscape. Like, out of nowhere for indie artists, you know, always being affected by the top level of the industry, even if you aren't yeah, participating. I think about that. They will make TikTok the only platform where any artists aren't competing with major artists. They yeah. go all the way. That's true. Yeah. 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 Positive and negative. The impact is there. So this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary, episode number 33. Make sure you share it with your folks, man, don't keep this information to yourself. Don't keep this sauce to yourself. Go ahead and share the pod so we can continue to grow. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.